myself if that's all right. Delighted by this unexpected visitor, Bear got up and invited him in. Well, hello, stranger, come on in. Don't stand out there and freeze. It's warm inside and you can rest. Here, take my blanket, please. <laughs> I'm only playing my guitar and looking at my tree. But if you've nowhere else to go, do spend some time with me. So they sat, Bear and his visitor, talking about the snow and the wind, singing a few tunes and enjoying Christmas Eve. Finally, the little fellow, who was now quite warm, stood and said he really must be going. I thank you, Bear, for all you've done. This really has been lots of fun. Bear stood in the doorway and watched him go off through the forest, thinking what a nice time it had been. All of a sudden, his friend shouted back to him, Come for a ride, Bear, come with me, I'd really like your company. A ride on Christmas Eve? Bear grabbed his scarf and mittens and ran through the deep snow to where a big sleigh sat waiting. The little driver turned as Bear reached the sleigh. Just climb up here and hang on tight. You'll be back home before it's light. Wrapping the big quilt around him, Bear sat down in the seat. Before he could say, let's be off, they were off, off and up, up through the air and away into the snowy night. Oh, what a Christmas, hollered Bear. I've never had such fun. I'd like to think that it could be like this for everyone. But most of all, just meeting you has really brought me cheer. Why don't we plan, my little friend, to do this every year? So off they flew, far in the night and through the swirling snow with Bear's companion laughing loud, a jolly ho, ho, ho! Are you expecting Father Christmas this year? Perhaps you're hoping he'll bring you something rather special. Well, there's a song about a girl who gets some very unusual Christmas presents, and you might know it. You join in if you do. It starts with a partridge in a pear tree. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me four collie birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the fifth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me five gold rings, four collie birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Six next. On the sixth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me six geese a laying, five gold rings, four collie birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the seventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me seven swans a swimming, six geese a laying, five gold rings, four collie birds, three French hens, two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. What's next? Eight. On the eighth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me eight mater milking, seven swans a swimming, six geese a laying, five gold rings, four collie birds, three French hens, two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. On the ninth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me nine pipers piping, eight mates a milking, seven swans a swimming, six geese a laying, five gold rings, four collie birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Last one coming up. On the tenth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me ten drummers drumming, nine pipers piping, eight mates a milking, seven swans a swimming, six geese a laying, five gold rings, four collie birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree.
five gold rings, four collie birds. You know, that is really difficult to remember. And here's something else to test your memories. Suppose the toys had one big Christmas stocking this year. See if you can remember what they like in their stocking. I'll play for Big Ted. Right, there you are. I'm going to sit here, Big Ted. And I'll play for Humpty. Are you ready? We'll yes. go first. In the toys Christmas stocking this year, they had a silver star on a stick. Right, let's try and remember that, Big Ted. In the toys Christmas stocking this year, they had a silver star on a stick and what do we have, Big Ted? A sprig of holly. A sprig of holly. In the toys Christmas stocking this year, they had a silver star on a stick, a sprig of holly and, Humpty, a, a branch of mistletoe. Right. In the toys Christmas stocking this year, they had a silver star on a stick, a sprig of holly, a branch of mistletoe, and a Christmas pudding. Right, Humpty. It's getting more difficult now. <laughs> the toys Christmas stocking this year, they had a silver star on a stick, a, a branch of mistletoe. No, no, it was a sprig of holly next. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Humpty. Ted and I won that game. <laughs> oh, Quite difficult, though. It is difficult. Time for us to go now. Why don't you see how long you can remember the things in the sto toy stocking? Goodbye. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs>
all the engines were working hard. Thomas and Toby were busy carrying people and parcels up and down the branch line. Everyone was happy. Only the coaches, Annie and Clarabel, were complaining. It's always the same before Christmas, they groaned. We feel so full, we feel so full. Oh, come on, said Thomas. Where's your festive spirit? Christmas Day is almost here. By the side of the track was a lonely little cottage with a familiar figure waving to them. It's Mrs. Kindly, whistled Thomas. Peep, peep, happy Christmas. Thomas always felt better for seeing her. Christmas just wouldn't be Christmas without Mrs. Kindly. When work was over, Thomas went to see the other engines. All their coats had been polished. Ha, huh, said Gordon, just look at us. Your driver will have to work fast to get you as smart as us. Never mind that, replied Thomas. I've something important to say. Do you realize it's a whole year since Mrs. Kindly saved us from a nasty accident? You remember when she was ill in bed and... Yes, of course, interrupted Edward. You told us how she waved her red dressing gown out of her window to warn you about a landslide ahead. And you and Toby gave her presents, Percy joined in. And the fat controller sent her to Bournemouth to get better. But, said James and Henry together, the rest of us have never thanked her properly. Exactly, said Thomas. So now I think we should all give her a special Christmas party. Everyone was getting very excited, and the drivers felt sure that the fat controller would agree, as indeed he did. The engines were all busy making plans when silence fell. The fat controller had bad news. The weather's changed badly. Mrs. Kindly is snowed up. Toby says he'll help to rescue her. You must help too, Thomas. There's no party unless you do. Thomas hated snow, but he said bravely, I'll try, sir. We must rescue her. We must. There's a good engine. You and Toby will manage splendidly. Thomas charged the snowdrifts fiercely. Sometimes he swept them aside. Sometimes they stuck fast, and the men had to loosen them. But at the cutting near the cottage, they could go no further. Look at that, exclaimed Thomas's fireman. Peep, peep, peep. Here we are, whistled Thomas. An answering wave came from an upstairs window. Then they heard a familiar sound. That's Terence, said Thomas. He's come to help too. Sure enough, Terence had a snowplow and was working hard to clear a path to the railway line and safety. At long last, the rescue was complete. Percy took the tired workman home. Terence said goodbye to Mrs. Kindly and promised to take care of her cottage as he watched them all set off. The engines made good time. No more snow had fallen, but the yard was dark. Thomas's heart sank. Suddenly, all the lights went on. What a marvelous sight awaited Mrs. Kindly. Well done, said the fat controller. I'm really proud of you all. Mrs. Kindly especially thanked the smaller engines. Thomas and Toby are old friends, she said. And now, Percy, you are my friend too. Percy was very pleased. Three cheers for Mrs. Kindly, he called. Peep, 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 they all whistled. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thomas the Tank Engine and his friends thought it was the best Christmas ever. And Mrs. Kindly could think of nowhere she would rather live and here with them on the island of Sodor.
new world of entertainment on BBC One features a new doctor and old adversaries. I suddenly feel conspicuous. I'm not surprised in that coat. No, it's more a question of having organised a surprise party and forgotten who it's for. He is an enemy of the cyber race. His capture will serve our turn. More so, the capture of his TARDIS. Doctor Who, part of the new year of entertainment on BBC One. In just over 20 minutes, the feature film Courage of Lassie. First on BBC One, some festive frolics with Bugs Bunny and his loony Christmas tales. Rainbow. Up above the streets and houses, rainbow climbing high. Everyone can see it smiling over the sky. Oh, oh, hello there. As it's very nearly Christmas, we started putting up our decorations. Christmas is my most favourite time. Oh, yes. All that lovely food, jelly and trifle, mince pies, Christmas cake, oranges... Oh, Zippy, you're just greedy. Oh, I like Christmas because you give your friends presents and I like giving presents. Oh, in that case, I'll have mine now, George. Oh, Zippy. Well, Bungle, did you buy a present for Auntie Elsie in New Zealand? Auntie Elsie? Mm -hmm. Well, where's this morning's newspaper? Well, well it's here, Jeffrey, but why, why, why? What, 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 what? Well, yes, look, here we are. The last day for posting Christmas parcels to New Zealand is today. Oh, dear! Why today? It isn't Christmas just yet. No, but New Zealand's a long way away, isn't it, Jeffrey? Yes, it is, Zippy. You see, Auntie's parcel will have to go by train and aeroplane to get to her house. Oh. Well, look, if we all hurry, I might just catch the post in time. But listen, have you got the presents ready you're going to give, Auntie? Oh, yes. I've got her a lovely pair of bed socks. <laughs> <laughs> they look more like bed socks for a baby elephant. <laughs> yes, they are rather large, Bungle. Oh. Still, never mind. <laughs> I'm giving Auntie Elsie some hankies, Jeffrey. Oh, they're very pretty, George. What about you, Zippy? I, I'm giving her some chocolates. My favourites. Yummy. Oh, Zippy, you can't give Auntie Elsie a box of half-eaten chocolates. Look, I've only had a look, Jeffrey. I didn't eat any. Look, come on, close the lid and wrap them up. We're going to get covered in germs from your grubby hands. <laughs> well, look, we've got a lot to do, haven't we? We've got to pack those presents carefully for the long journey. Well, what should we do first, Jeffrey? Well, Bungle, can you go to the kitchen and find me a strong cardboard box? Oh, yes. Now, Zippy, George, yeah, yeah. find me some string and sticky tape. Yeah, yeah, I'll see if I can find some wrapping paper and some nice sticky labels. Yeah, string. Yeah, get... <laughs> right, oh, that yes, should be enough go. wrapping paper, I think. Here we are, Jeffrey. A cardboard box. Oh, smashing bungle. Right, we better wrap your socks first, I think. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, of course. Now, some nice pretty paper, please, Zippy. Oh, yeah, there you are, Jeffrey. There we go. God, yes. Oh, dear, Jeffrey. They're too big. Well, let's fold the socks, shall we, bungle? Perhaps they'll fit then. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's too small, isn't it? We need a larger piece, please, Zippy. Oh, yeah, pick up it. This will be better, Jeffrey. There's one here, look. Oh, yeah. Let's try this, shall we? Yeah, Thank you. Okay. How's that? Oh, yes, that's going to be fine. Lovely. Yes. Now then, some sticky tape, please, George. Yes, the presents look nice wrapped in pretty paper. Don't hit the sticky tape. Oh, yes. Well, hurry up, George. Jeffrey on bits of post. He's sticking to my feet. Oh, oh, Jeffrey, I'm sorry. Oh, George, here, let me do that. Yes. Oh, what a mess you're getting into. Sorry, sorry, Jeffrey, it's very sticky. Oh, there we are. Now, Good. some sticky tape onto the paper to hold it down. Thank you, Bungle. That's it. Now, we fold over the corners like that. I'll hold it for you, Jeffrey. Thank you, Bungle. I'll get some more tape. Uh, more, more sticky tape. Uh, yes, there you are. do it, Jeffrey. Stick it down. There you are. Now, do the other. No, yeah, the, other the other end, Jeff. The other end, yeah. Fold the paper over. 
Thank you. Oh, hold it. Thank you, Bungle. Oh. And some sticky tape. There we are. Oh, that's good. That. Now we need a label, don't we, uh, Bungle? So, uh, Auntie Elsie, another presents from you? Yes. Oh, Geoffrey, could you write? With love from Bungle, please, because I'm not very good at writing yet. Yeah, yeah that's all right, Bungle. That's love from... Yeah, from, from Bungle. Bungle. There. Oh, that's good with a kiss, yes. <laughs> oh, this parcel does look pretty, Geoffrey, all wrapped up. I'm sure Auntie Elsie will be very pleased. Good. It's just your present to wrap now, Geoffrey. What are you giving to, Auntie? Well, look, it's a pretty glass animal. Oh. But be careful, though, Zippy, because it's very fragile. Oh, it breaks yes. easily. See, I've got to put this special wrapping around it so that it won't break. Oh, good. Well, there's some paper, Geoffrey. Now, come on, you don't want to miss the post. Oh, no, you're oh, right, oh. but we don't want to miss the post, do we? So, can you uh, give me some sticky tape, please, George? Oh, sticky tape, yes, yes, Jeffy, coming up. Oh, 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 oh dear, I've done it again. Careful, Bungle, it's not you. Oh, 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 Bungle, here, give it to me. You're wasting all that tape, you know. Who are you then, Jeffrey? Hey, pass the roll to me. There. Thank you. Right, can you hold it for me, Zippy? That's it. Of course, yeah. Now, stick the paper on. Put the tape onto the paper. There we are. Now, hold the ends. This is all a bit rushed. I hope Auntie will realise that we... More sticky tape, yeah. Yeah. Stick that down. Use the other end, JP. Pull that one. That's yeah. right, George. Pull the paper over. And, and some stick more that down. There we are. Now we want a sticky label, don't we? Oh, yeah. Where are they? You know, I don't believe this. We're never going to get these presents posted, you know. Well, they were on the stool, Jeff. Oh, I saw them. Wait, hey, hey. I can see. There's the labels. <laughs> Where's it? Behind you. Look behind you. Behind Where? you. <laughs> oh, Bungle. there they are. Bungle's tried to post himself. <laughs> oh, sorry, Jeffrey. <laughs> There we are, Auntie's presents all wrapped up in the cardboard box. 
But why didn't you use pretty Christmas paper, Geoffrey? Well, the parcel's got a long way to go, hasn't it, Bungle? So we need some strong brown paper. Oh, Oh, I don't tie up that now. It, oh, oh dear. dear! The string's too short. Yeah. Oh, oh well, wait a minute. Try this piece. It, it's longer, I think, Geoffrey. Right, yeah. thank you, Zippy. Yeah. Let's see if you're right, shall we? Yeah. Yeah, wrap it round the parcel, Geoffrey. Yeah. That's right. Tuck it under. And then over the other side. Yeah, 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 tie a knot, Geoffrey. Oh, yes, yeah, it's a strong knot because it's got a long way to go, Geoffrey. That's right, George. Nice and tight. Ooh, there we are. Good. Ooh, Make a little knot. Just make that tight good. Right, I'll cut a little bit over we don't, we don't need. Oh, God. There we are. Good. Oh, d don't forget to write Auntie's name on the puzzle, Jeffrey. Yeah, where she lives in New Zealand. Yeah. No, I haven't forgotten. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's her name. There we are. 14, 15, 3. Yeah. New Zealand is that. Yes, New Zealand. Oh, God, God, God. Right, just about time, I think, to get to the post office now. Oh, well, Geoffrey, you better wrap up nice and warm. It's cold outside. Right, thanks, Bungle. Oh, oh hello, Jane. Oh, hello, Jane. Listen, can you look after everybody for me? I just got to pop out to the post office. Oh, all right, Geoffrey. Don't be long. I won't. <laughs> Oh, where's Jane? She's gone to get Rod and Freddy because we're going to have a game. Did Ooh. you post Auntie's present? Yes, Bungle. They're all on the way to New Zealand. Oh, good. It, it, what, what have you got there, Geoffrey? Guess. Oh, it's hot, Geoffrey. Oh, let me feel, let me feel. Oh, oh yes. Oh, and it smells. Oh, oh, but it smells nice. It makes me feel hungry. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you guess what's wrapped in this paper? It's hot, and the smell mm, makes you feel very hungry. Well, should we unwrap them, see if you're right? Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, come on. Ooh, what is it? Oh, oh chips! Oh, yes. my yes. favourite! Thank everybody. Oh, there you are. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, oh, yes. Oh, oh, come oh, and help me. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Bungo. Oh, thank you, Bungo. Oh, 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 look at all those chips in a present. Oh, look at that. Oh, there's a lot of presents. Oh, you... You've got one present left over. Who's it for, Jane? Aha, this is a special present for a game of Pass the Parcel. Oh, Jane, oh, yeah. that's my favourite oh, game. Oh. Do you ever play Pass the Parcel? Well, when the music stops, whoever has the parcel has to unwrap it. Right, well, you all play and I'll put the music on, shall I? Right, 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 Oh, no. 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 Right, let's see what I've got in here. I bet it's nice. I bet it's... Oh, oh no. Oh, right, off you go again, then. Oh, Jeffrey. Thank you, Freddy. Jane. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'll get Jane. Yeah. Oh, 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 I, I will never get it. I oh, know what I George! Oh, oh, it's me, it's me. Oh, I'll open it. Please open it, George. Can you help me? Give you a hand. Take the lid off. What, oh, is, what is it, George? Look, George! Oh, it's a snowstorm. Oh. Uh, I wonder what's in the snowstorm. Oh, a fairy. Just what we want for our Christmas tree. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm afraid it's time for us all to go now, but have a very happy Christmas, won't you? Take care. Bye-bye.
What are you looking at, Jeffrey? It's the nativity, George. It's a model of something that happened a long, long time ago, when Christmas first began. Well, who are all those people, Jeffrey? And why are they wearing those funny clothes? Well, this is Mary over here. And look, there's Joseph. And the baby Jesus. And they're wearing those clothes, Bungle, because they came from another country. And it all happened a long, long time ago. And this is the story. <laughs> A long, long time ago, in a country far away, lived Mary and Joseph. One night, whilst they were asleep, Mary had a dream. Mary! Mary! Oh, hello! I'm the angel Gabriel, Mary, and I've got a special message for you. Have you? Yes, you're going to have a baby! A baby? Yes, a baby boy, and you must call him... Oh, dear, I've forgotten. Uh, Jesus, Bungle. Oh, yes, that's right, thank you. You must call him Jesus. Well, I must go now. Why don't you wake Joseph up and tell him? Goodbye. Uh, Joseph, Joseph, wake up. Oh, what's the matter, Mary? I'm going to have a baby called Jesus. How do you know? The angel Gabriel told me. But Mary and Joseph had to go away on a long journey to a town called Bethlehem to pay some money, their taxes, to the people who looked after the town. Are you all right, Mary, dear? Yes, thank you, Joseph. I do feel very tired, though. Is it very much further to go? No, no, look. There's Bethlehem over there. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in the dark street shineth the everlasting light. The and fears of all thy years are met in thee tonight. Well, at last, Mary and Joseph reached Bethlehem. People had come from all over the country to pay their money, their taxes, so that all the places to stay were full up. Poor Mary and Joseph couldn't find anywhere to stay for the night. They walked from inn to inn. Oh, that's a kind of hotel. But everywhere was full up and they were turned away because there was just no room at the inn. Ah, oh, yes. Oh, he hello. I'm the innkeeper and I've no more room for anyone to stay. Oh, 
coming. Hello, innkeeper. Do you have a room, please? My wife's going to have a baby and she's very, very tired. Oh, I, I'm very, very sorry, but there are so many people here in Bethlehem. I've, I've no more room. Oh, never mind, Joseph. Let's try somewhere else. But, but, but everywhere is full. Oh, dear. Wait a minute. I, I've got an idea. There's some clean straw in this table over there. Y you, you could stay there with the animals. Oh. And at least it's dry and you and your wife will be warm on this cold night. Thank you, innkeeper. Come along, Mary. We'll stay in the stable with the horses and the sheep. So Mary and Joseph went outside to the stables and they made a bed for Mary to lie on out of all the clean straw. And it was here that the baby Jesus was born with all the animals around them. Meanwhile, three shepherds were looking after their sheep in a field nearby. Now, it was growing very dark and becoming cold, too. Mm -hmm. 